This program is brought to you by Emory University. Well, I mean, I'm asking these questions because these, these seem to me the real questions of place, not where it is geographically on a map, like what buildings still exist or have been torn down, but you know, what, is, what does it really mean and what is its, what is its pull on you? What is its gravity? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think it's about, for me, when I think about Mississippi, for example, I don't imagine that I will ever live in Mississippi. And yet, it is absolutely the place that I hold on to. You won't live there, but you'll always live there. And I'll always yeah. live there. Because it, it is, to me, who I am. More than this geography, as you have mentioned, that I've spent most of my life in. Because, you know, in my head, I am Mississippi. Uh, I feel like it's Mississippi that made me. Mm -hmm. It is interesting how those, it, wouldn't, it doesn't take much, you know, the right geography at the right time right. becomes your primary geography. I mean, do you feel that way? I mean, is, did Alabama make you? No doubt. I mean, I was born in Florida, but, you know, raised all of my conscious life born in, in uh, born in West Palm Beach, Florida. Not Gainesville. Not Gainesville, okay. no. But all my conscious life until I was 22 in Alabama. And so I didn't even know there was much of a world outside of it until... But you would live there again. I, I would, for the same reason I think that we're talking about, you know, that your, the, your places have this kind of hold on you. I, couldn't, I don't think I can live in Gadsden mm -hmm. again. I mean, what, does, what does a poet do in Gadsden? Mm -hmm. I don't know. As far as I can tell, most Gadsden poets drink themselves to death. Mm -hmm. yeah. We won't let you go back there. Okay, then. yeah. Yeah, but it, I mean, you feel that, that there's some sort of pull on you, and even once my grandparents are not are not there, which hopefully is another couple of years away, you know, there still will be this weird gravity that makes me feel like I will have to go back there to keep an eye on it. And part of that, I think, is just and I got and this is my question to you both about Gulfport and and Atlanta. I mean, I feel to me like I might be coming back so that I remember where I am. Well, I think coming to Atlanta was about that. It was about, you know, I think I had started to say this and, and I got sidetracked by my, my own tears, but um, I really, when I said I wasn't ever going to come back here, I also blocked out as much as one can do this as much of those years that I had grown up in Atlanta as possible because they were just really painful to remember. They, the years of living here with my stepfather, I wanted to erase from my mind. And of course that's impossible, but I did a decent job of it for years, I guess, which is what allowed me to survive for, you know, after that terrible loss. So I didn't want to come back because I didn't want to bring that back. But not bringing that back means not only did I not have a bunch of me, but I didn't have my mother because she was a big part of those years. So in order to get her back in some ways, it meant getting back me in those years and it meant getting back all the stuff that those years had with them which was this place. So even though I had never intended to do it at first, it became something I had to do in order to reclaim so much of myself and her that I'd lost. Mississippi is about a reclamation too, though. Though I wouldn't live there, it is absolutely necessary for me to assert again and again that it's mine. And that has everything to do with you know, being rendered illegitimate by the place. I mean, the place said, no, you know, you are illegal. We have a clause in the Constitution that's meant to keep you from existing. That's the place I'm going to own. Own it. Yeah. Well, on the last line in Native Guard, uh, Native Land, where they'll bury me, I mean, that, what more of a 
act of ownership mm -hmm. can can one imagine? And it, you know, to return to my original question about your having been aware of certain landscapes kind of being ablated in some way, but also clearly being engaged in the act of maybe writing your own landscapes o over these geographies that you know very mm -hmm. well. I mean, that seems to be what maybe you're doing there in the final poem of yeah. Native Guard. Yeah, I think that it's just a poem where I'm like st stomping my foot and saying, mine, mine, yeah. mine. Yeah. And um, then you get to, I mean, you get to be the author of it, not just the owner, but you get to be the author of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned that in writing domestic work because domestic work, for example, a poem like the one you mentioned um, with the records and the static, uh, Saturday Matinee is a poem about, um, you know, watching the um, imitation of life, seeing that movie for the first time, um, and also, you know, hearing in the other room this domestic violence that's happening. Um, the, the act of writing the poem for me really was an act of, you know, the, being the author of the past in some ways. The past that I felt powerless in. I don't feel so powerless writing it. You said coming back to Atlanta in, in part was about reclaiming your mother, but also about reclaiming a part of you. Mm -hmm. And reclaiming Mississippi is also about maintaining a sense of, of wholeness mm -hmm. and that there's something empowering. Um, not just about putting yourself back together in that way, but, but owning that geography. What are the, what are the fruits of grasping that power? What, what new, does, does new work become possible because you have new power? What I know is that, um, I think in many ways like you, my obsessions don't change. I'm still interested in all these things that we've been talking about. And I'm just finding, I think, other ways of answering those questions to myself again and again. Um, and I, you know, and I, I don't think that, I don't think the answer is ever the same, you know? I may ask the same question. And I think I'm answering it, or I, I'm asking it at least again to myself in, um, in the book I'm working on right now. You know, this is sort of an aside, but I've been thinking about it. When I do pay attention to reviews or things that people say, and I try very hard not to do very much of that, but um, some things sort of stay with me. And I, I remember reading that uh, someone had made this comment back about domestic work that I seen really focused on the past and that there's something really cagey about that. Like I'm being real secretive or something. And I wanted to go, well, give me a minute, why don't you? <laughs> you know, there's an herb coming, you know? Yeah. Um, there have been people who come up to me after readings and say, well, how come your father doesn't really appear in many of these poems? You know, my answer would always be, well, he appears to the extent that he appeared in my life. I have an answer for them. But it's just, you know, the next thing. Yeah. Well, I noticed this in some of your recently published work, um, Elegy Poem and uh, New England Review, and then you also have this poem in Poetry Northwest, I think it's called Just Mexico, right. right? Where your father your father appears, and in fact in the Elegy poem it seems that you've imagined him, or maybe you're remembering him, in a landscape that's a lot more like that 
natural landscape that you ascribed to him earlier mm -hmm. in, in our conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, that you, you imagine that for him nature was what he would have known growing up in Canada. And you kind of put him in that in that landscape, in that poem. You're, you're fishing together. Right. Yeah. He is figuring more prominently in the book I'm working on just because now it's the time to turn my attention mm -hmm. there. Um, never meant to be sort of cagey or leaving out certain things. It, um, this takes a while to get it all out. It does take yeah. a while. And you know, and I never know, I mean perhaps you're like this, but I never know what I'm really interested in until I step back and look at it. Yeah. I mean, I know the research I'm interested in. Right. I know the surface, and I never know what it's actually leading to me, leading me to. I mean, you remember we read together at Auburn, and I read those poems, the Costa paintings Costa, poems. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know where they were leading me. And they've, it, I mean, they've bled in part to these poems about your father, right? Right. Yeah. But it makes sense because those images always begin with the white father and devolve from there. That's where it begins. And the ones I kept focusing on mostly were the white father and the black mother and the biracial child. And it's silly, but it didn't occur to me that, well, I mean, it, I knew that I was interested in, in, that, in that family unit, obviously, um, but I didn't know the ways that it would lead me to thinking about um, ideas of knowledge and dominion and colony and empire, but it has. That's not so far from me thinking about my relationship to Mississippi and its history. It's just a little bit broadening of the focus. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.